Welcome back to Season Liberally. Today we're going to be making the internet sensation that is the Smash Burger. Stick around. So today we're going to be making Smash Burgers. And now, I know everybody's got, a, everybody's got a video about this, but here's the thing. Almost all the videos I see are of people who have like industrial kitchens. They work in a kitchen and they have a giant flat top that it's, they can get up to a whipping 600 degrees and they can cook a smash burger on. It's not a difficult task to make a smash burger on a big giant flat top. You can make dozens of them at a time. It's really not that hard. So you'll see these people who have like, you know, million dollar homes with giant kitchens or they'll have a, a, a like I say, like they'll work in an industrial kitchen and they'll make a smash burger and you don't have that at home. So I'm gonna make mine in a cast iron pan today so you can see what it looks like when you're gonna to try to make it at home. Now we're gonna start out by grinding our meat. Now, for a smash burger, this is one of the times I would tell you, you probably don't have to do that. Uh, I'm doing it myself today uh, because I wanted to show you sort of what I do to grind meat. So the difference between making a smash burger and making what, what I would consider like a regular burger, a regular thick burger, is most of the time when you cook a thick burger, you're not cooking it too uh, to well done. You're cooking it to, you know, me, some people like a medium rare, some people like a medium, medium, I'm a medium well guy when it comes to a burger. But when you, when you get burger from the store, when you get hamburger from the store, if you just go to a supermarket or something, these are cuts that are sitting out, they're cuts, and then they wind up grinding it and that sits out and there's a ton of surface area on that, on that burger to get contaminated. Right? And you're not bringing up to a temperature that can kill everything in it. Right? You're not cooking it to well done when you cook one of those big thick burgers. So I almost always encourage people, if you're gonna make a big thick burger at home, grind your own meat for that. Go buy you know, a, a nice piece of chuck roast or you know, brisket or whatever you wanna cook your burger as, what, whatever kind of meat you want in your burger, and then use that. Grind that up to your specifications. Add the fat to your specifications. Chances are there's a lot less chance of you getting sick off of a big, one big uniform piece than it's something that had to go through a bunch of different machinery that's been sitting out, that is cuts off of multiple different pieces of the cow. It's just a lot easier uh, to get sick that way. Now, I'm not saying that your local supermarket is, is something that's gonna get you sick, but I wouldn't trust it. That's, that's where I stand on it. Now, if you have a good relationship with a butcher, you can just go there and say, hey, I would really like to have you know, this kind of meat. And if, you're, if, you're, if you feel safe and you feel okay working with your butcher, you can always just use their ground meat. But if you're going to a supermarket, my suggestion is you make a regular burger, grind your own meat. Now, a smash burger is gonna come up to, t to well done temperature. There's no way to get the caramelization on that one side and then flip it over and then not have it be well done. So it's gonna be well done just by the nature of the thinness of that burger. So we're not gonna, we, you normally don't have to worry too much. That being said, grinding my own meat today just to sort of show you what I did. Now, I, I went out and I bought a chuck roast. Now, a chuck roast has big globules of fat on it, and I want that fat in here, right? I wanna keep the fat in here. You wanna keep a nice fatty, uh, you know, you don't wanna to be too fatty, but you certainly want a little bit of fat, uh, and this will probably be about, you know, 85% fat when I, 85% lean when I finish grinding it. So normally when you grind something, you grind it twice. You grind it through a, a, a coarse grind, and then you put it in a bowl, run it back through, and grind it in a finer grind. Uh, some people like that coarse grind and they like to keep, stay, keep at that particular level. I don't always grind it twice. I'm just gonna start here. I'm just gonna start grinding up this meat. So I have a coarse ground already done. Now I wanna replace the holes to make it a finer grind. When you grind meat, it's always good to make sure that the meat itself is cold. Uh, 
you can even put it in the freezer for a few minutes before you start grinding. It makes it so that the grind, uh, that it's just easier for the blade to cut through it. Now this is a purpose made grinder specifically for grinding meat, but there's plenty of uh, multitaskers out there. Uh, KitchenAid blenders or KitchenAid mixers normally have attachments that you can put on there. And there's a couple of other different types of attachments that you can find that you can get a meat grinder in your house without having to buy a specific meat grinder. So now second time around through the whole thing, you take the ground meat, you put it in, run it through your finer grind. All right, we have our wonderful chuck roast that has been turned into ground chuck which is exactly what we we're hoping for. So now I ground a lot more meat than I needed. Uh, I have uh, all this extra here. I'm only gonna be making six burgers. So I took that out and set it on the side and I'm gonna put the rest of this meat away for some other day. Okay, so we're gonna tear out and then scale our patties. Patty size is sort of key for this. You're gonna be squashing this thing down so you don't wanna put six ounce, a six ounce burger or four ounce, a quarter pounder burger on there. If you squash that out, it's gonna curl, it's not gonna work, it's, it's, it's gonna be way too big for your bun. Two ounces is the right size for this, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make, I'm gonna scale two ounces, and then every two ounces, and that's like 55 grams, and every two ounces, I'm gonna make a ball. I'm just gonna make the ball in my hand here, and then I'm gonna set it on my cookie sheet. Now the ball should be pretty compact. You shouldn't, I mean, you don't squeeze it so like as hard as you can, but you want the ball to be, uh, you don't want a lot of like air or, or any void space in there. You want it to be uh, compact enough so that all the meat is touching. Now another way to do this is to get a, a scoop and scoop with it, but that compresses it a little and it might it'll definitely change the, the weight. Doing things by weight is almost always the most accurate way to do it. So um, you know, if you haven't invested in a, in a kitchen scale and you're interested in cooking, you know, kitchen scales are relatively inexpensive and uh, you, know, you can get one for about 10 or 15 bucks and they are invaluable when you're baking and like when you're doing things like this too. You know, you're, uh, you're making some, making sure that something is exact, what, exactly what you need. You want to make sure that the that the measurements are there, and so you know you can't eyeball everything. I know people like to think that cooking is just throwing things in a pan, and that's all you have to do. There's a lot more per precision necessary for lots of cooking, and uh, and you know if you're going to be if you're going to be uh, somebody who cooks well and who understands the process of cooking, sometimes you're gonna have to hold yourself to things that are a little more rigorous than just, I just threw this together. And that's not to say I just threw this together is a bad thing, right? I just threw this together has its place, but so does uh, being very precise. So that's a long way to say we gotta let these sit here for a minute. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put these in the fridge we're gonna leave them uncovered, and we're just gonna leave them in there for about you know 40 minutes or so, so that they that because the, when they went through the process of being chopped, they warmed up a little. We want to make sure they're cold when they come out. Um, the colder they are, the better they're gonna squish. Uh, we don't want to get them frozen, obviously, but we do want them cold. So we're gonna put them back in the fridge, like I say, for about 40 minutes, and then we'll we'll get started cooking our burger. All right, so for my smash burger, I like to kind of model it after a Big Mac, right? So it's gonna be. Two patties, sesame seed bun. Why don't we just sing the song? Two all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun, right? So we got sesame seed bun set aside. We have, uh, the, we're gonna be cooking the burgers. So those will be two patties on there. It'll be a double cheeseburger, but it's gonna need lettuce and onion and pickle. Now, when I make my sauce, the special sauce, I'm gonna actually put the onion and the pickle in the sauce. Uh, I find that this 
it distributes the flavors a little better across the whole burger. If you enjoy having a little bit of uh, pickle on one bite and then not on the next or whatever, you go ahead and, and make it how you want. This particular version is how I like to do it. And I start out with a cup of mayonnaise, right? And then I'm gonna actually, we're gonna work on our knife skills today. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make, we're gonna make some really fine cuts with our onion today. We're gonna do essentially what they do in a Michelin star restaurant. Now I've never worked in a Michelin star restaurant, but I have eaten in Michelin star restaurants before. And the way that they do this is they nip off both ends of the onion and then they pull out the very center of the onion and they pull out maybe one or two of these layers at the top. And then what you do is you lay one of these slices as flat as you can and then you slice super thin and work your way through the whole onion. Just slice in the whole slice as thin as you can, right? So as you can see, that's nice and thin. And then they go the other way, right? They turn it the other way. And they slice super thin this way. And now, this is a great way to work on your knife skills. You wanna make a sauce with something like these onions. These onions essentially just disappear when you make the sauce, right? So look at how fine these onions are. Look at how finely chopped those are. That's gonna be what goes into our, uh, into our sauce. So it's not gonna feel like there's big chunks of onion in there. It said it's gonna just sort of feel like it's homogenous with the rest of the sauce. And take your time, you know, practice your cuts. Practice how, how tight and how close everything should be. You know, this is a great way to practice your precision on your cuts. Nice, very finely chopped onions. Now this is about two tablespoons, which is about what I want, of onion. And put that right into my mayo. That's a cup of mayonnaise. So two tablespoons of onion to one cup of mayonnaise. And now I'm gonna clean up here a little bit. Save the rest of my onion. Now in a Michelin star restaurant, they would save all of this. You know, anything that they didn't chop up, they would save for other things. But if they were ever making a sauce or something, they would use that very finely chopped onion in that sauce. Our next part calls for dill relish, right? So you're gonna wanna put in two tablespoons of dill relish, kind of an equal amount of this. But I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna slice up two pickles. And see how much that gives me. Some finely diced pickles. Now they're not as diced because as the uh, as the onion, because the onion was uh, was a lot more rigid. This is a little more uh, floppy. So I'm going to run my knife over the tops of these just a little bit to try to mince it up. Any big pieces. Now this is about that's looking like about a tablespoon. So I will I will cut a second one here. And you want to work on your knife skills. Nothing better than uh, trying to chop something that's uncooperative. You know what I mean, don't attack somebody. All right, it's a little more than two, so I'm just gonna put in what I think is about two, and that should be good. We have our sauce, get a spoon out to stir it. Now, we'll stir in the onion, we'll stir in the pickle. Now, this is where your taste comes in, right? I'm gonna tell you my recipe, but you know, Make it how you want to make it, right? You know, like, like almost all of these sauces basically have a little bit of ketchup, a little bit of mayo, and then a couple of other additives to make them taste how they want them to taste. You want it sweeter, you can make it sweeter. You want to make it a lot more, uh, a lot more umami flavored or, or you want to make it sour, more sour. That's also, uh, there, it's very easy to do. So I'm gonna add a little bit of salt to this because I know it's not salted yet. Give it a stir. And now I'm gonna start adding some things. So, now mine has about two tablespoons of ketchup, okay? So we're gonna put in one, two, okay? To that, I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of soy sauce. Now I find that soy sauce adds a really wonderful sort of umami flavor to this, which is really nice. 
Now to add just a, a, a bunch of different types of flavors under notes in this, we're gonna add a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce. That's gonna get added in here too. Um, this has all kinds of different flavors in here. There's a, you know, tiny hints of orange. You can smell, um, you know, a bunch of different spices that come out. This is, uh, but it's a really great uh, little sauce and it adds, like I say, a ton of under notes. I don't put a ton in there, but I put a little bit. Uh, a tablespoon of white vinegar. I like to have this be a little sour, so I'm gonna add a tablespoon of white vinegar to this. And I'm also gonna add about a half teaspoon of these red chili, chili uh, this red chili paste that I have. About a half a teaspoon. All right. Now I'm gonna give it a stir. See what it tastes like. And most of these sauces all kind of look the same. They all kind of have that sort of pink. It's got a pink look to it. Orange-ish pink. All right, let's give this a taste. It needs more salt but I'm actually gonna do that in the form of soy sauce. I'm gonna add a little more soy to this. And taste it again. Doesn't need anything. Now, here's what I want you to do. Taste it for yourself. You think it's, it needs a little bit of sour? Here's a chance to add a little more sour. Put a little more, a little more vinegar in it. You don't think it's hot enough? Add a little more chili sauce. You think it needs more different undernotes, different flavorings? You can always add more Worcestershire. Not sweet enough for you? Add more ketchup. It needs umami flavor or salt? You can always add more soy sauce. Balance it. Make it balanced how, to your palate, right? My palate, your palate, they're different. They, they're just, they, they, they are attracted and repelled by different things. So make it wonderful for your palate. Taste it a bunch. What does it need? What's gonna balance it out? Is there, is there a note that's too harsh? Let's say it's too sour. You might wanna sweeten it. You might wanna add a little more salt. Let's say it's too sweet. You're gonna probably wanna sour it or you're gonna wanna add some umami to it. Always think of it like a scale, right? If, you, if it feels a little bit too much this way, add a little bit over here to pull it back this way, right? Sweet and sour, they're kind of on the opposite. Salt and sour, kind of also on the opposite, right? So you wanna add a little bit of something else to sort of bring it back into balance and get a sauce that tastes good to you. Throw mine out and make your own sauce, right? Find another one that, that fits your palate better. You don't like pickles? Find a different sauce. There's a ton of different options out there. This one in particular tastes a little like a Big Mac, so that's why I made it. Okay, one more element for this burger is the lettuce. And I'm gonna shred this really, really finely too. Um, and like I said earlier, you know, it's your burger, make it how you like, but uh, we're shredding this specifically because everything on this burger is nice and fine. There's no big chunks of anything. But if you like a one uniform piece of lettuce, go for it. All right, nice fine bits of lettuce. And that's the last thing I have to prepare. I have my sauce, my lettuce, I'm gonna get my burgers out and I'm gonna get my burner set up and we're gonna get cooking. So my, my, my burgers came out of the, uh, of the fridge and they're nice and firm, which is what we want. Uh, I'm using American cheese. Now American cheese, if you're not familiar with this, is a very melty sort of yellow cheese. Um, it's not, it's, it's very mild. Um, it really just adds creaminess and a little bit of salt. It's really not, it doesn't have a very aged flavor to it. Um, you can use whatever cheese you like. Uh, I'm using American because it melts really well. Now when we make our burger, 
The concept is we're gonna salt and pepper these, right? Get these nice and salted. We're only salting one side. So we're putting like the salt on top. We're gonna to put our pepper on here. And now the goal is to smash it, right? So we're gonna smash each one. Well, on a flat top, this is easy because you can just lay them all out and then smash them. But here, we're not gonna be able to do that because we don't, you know, we only have a, a, a cast iron pan. Now, if you're using a flat top, something like this is amazing, right? You put it on there, you lay down a piece of parchment on top, and then you smash it with this. Now, I can't use this because um, I would use this on my grill or something outside, but I can't use this here because I just don't have a, a pan that's gonna be able to accommodate it. So I have to use my meat. This is a, this is a meat tenderizer. Now, you can use a, a, a back of a spatula, right? And then use a meat tenderizer to press it down or, the, or a, a wooden handle of some kind to press it down. I'm gonna just be using this because this works nice. And so I'm gonna show you exactly how this works, but you're gonna, you're gonna basically just be squashing these burgers down uh, onto the, the, the surface. So we're gonna move our uh, accoutrement onto the side and get our burner set up here. And then we are gonna start cooking. All right, so you can see this pan is ripping hot. It is not, it is not nonstick. It's a, it's a, a cast iron pan. I put a little tiny coating of oil in there just really quickly. What you do is you set your burger in there. I'm gonna put two in. You lay a little piece of parchment on top and then you just press down. And you wanna get it nice and flat. And there you go, there's a burger. Next one. And there's a reason why they do this with a flat top, right? Because it normally has a big hood over the top of it and it's shooting, uh, be able to suck up all this, this, uh, this smoke. So now you need a metal spatula for this. As we cook, you're gonna see it's gonna start to poke through, right? You're gonna see things start to change. It's gonna, it's gonna change from gray to brown underneath. Once you start to see it cooking most of the way through, we're gonna flip it. We're taking this opportunity to uh, toast our buns. So you see how most of it's cooked? You gotta scrape, right? You just gotta scrape along the bottom and then flip. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for a crusty little smash burger. We're gonna lay a piece of cheese on each. Let it cook. Now it doesn't have to cook for long. 30, 40 seconds, that's plenty of time. I'm gonna take this one, set it on top of this one. That's one. Now, I'm gonna scrape this down a little. Get any of the pieces that are off here, on here like this, and I'm gonna wipe them off. I'm gonna wipe all these pieces off and scrape, and I'm gonna wipe them off if I can. So here we go. Part two. Parchment, squash it. And these cook so fast, right? I could probably fit four in here if I was careful. But one, they cook so fast, but two, what I don't wanna do is put it in there and then misjudge where it is and then have two burgers collide into one another. All right, I'm gonna start scraping. That's key, right? You gotta scrape. Cheese. And that's a smash burger. And these cook for like, what? Two and a half minutes, 90 seconds, something like that. You know, between 90 seconds and two and a half minutes.
This one's gonna go on top of this one. Off they go. Last two. Here we go. And this is already starting to cool down, right? I can already hear it. it's not as hot as it was before. You wanna get these to be about an eighth of an inch thick. I'm gonna show you what it looks like if I use the back of a spatula. You might not have a, uh, you might not have a meat tenderizer like this. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like if you do the back of a spatula. So this is what it'll look like if I use this spatula. Not as pretty, but serves the same purpose. So now, to construct this burger, what I like to do is I like to make sure that I put this on the bread, right? If I put it on something that's wet or something that slides around, what happens is, is it slides off the burger and I'd much rather have it stay adhered. And it will stay adhered if I put it on the bread. So, one burger, two burger, here's the bottom. Look at that. A little bit of lettuce on top. And that is our smash burger. All right, well, moment of truth. This is what it looks like when it's done. That's a nice sloppy, look at that burger. Look at how sloppy and delicious that looks. So we're gonna give it a shot here. Outstanding. Genuinely outstanding. I'm here to tell you that is a delicious burger. Now, what does it have? It's got a really, each one of these slices of beef, fully cooked, tender, perfectly seasoned. It's got a, a really, that sauce has a little tiny bit of heat. It's got all those wonderful umami flavors. It's both sweet, sour, and umami. Um, the, the lettuce gives it that tiny bit of crunch that it needs. Mmm. So good. You're gonna love this. Give this a try. Like I said, I tried to make a smash burger that you can make in your own house and not in some multi-million dollar restaurant. Give this a shot. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment below, likes, share, subscribe. Catch you next time, season liberally. Oh,